It's time for new wheels. So which vehicle are you? You might be a looks person, rims and trims. Your vehicle might be a home office. So you're looking for feature abundance and creature comforts. And then there's the big one, brand loyalty. And you'd need some serious motivation to make the switch. But none of that is new. You can get big rims and wireless charging on any gas guzzler. The thing is, you've decided on the plug not the pump. And that's a big change. So let's look at the things that set EVs apart from each other. And to do that, I've come up with an EV comparison score. And it takes all these things into account. There's an objective section and a subjective section. And different vehicles will score better on different sides. We've got the nerd score, which is these objective measurements, and the FOMO score, which stands for fear of missing out and assigns a value to these attributes. But there's no better way to explain how it works than to just add up the points for an EV we can all get right now. So let's rate one, top to bottom. Let's kick it off with a vehicle that will be very sought after in 2023, the Hyundai Ioniq 5. And just to see how it stacks up, we'll go through the same with the upcoming Fisker Ocean. I'll go through each rating in detail. First up is range. And immediately we have to split the Ioniq 5 rating into two categories, rear wheel drive and all wheel drive. The all wheel drive Ioniq has 266 miles of range. The rear wheel drive has 303. And here's how we score the range. 500 plus miles of range, 10 points. 400 plus gets nine. 350 plus gets eight, 300 plus gets seven, 250 to 300 earns a six, 200 to 250 is a five out of 10, and all others are four out of 10. That gives our Ionic 5 all-wheel drive six points and our rear-wheel drive variant seven points. For the objective stats, we'll use the all-wheel drive Fisker Ocean Ultra as the base measurement for each category, and the Fisker Ocean Ultra would get seven out of 10 for 340 miles of range. On to charging, which has a few elements. The fastest charging vehicle gets 10 points. Currently, for reference, that's a Lucid Air, which would automatically receive a 10 at 275 plus kilowatts. Remember, kilowatts equals speed, kilowatt hours, equals capacity, which translates to range. That said, here's the charging breakdown. The first five points is accrued based on kilowatts. The max charge speed is important, but it's not everything. So the max charge speed is half of the 10 charging points. 250 plus kilowatts earns all five. 200 to 249 earns four. 150 to 200 is three. Under 200 is two. And it's one for those that don't fast charge, giving the Ionic 5 a four out of five. It has been published the ocean will charge at 250 plus kilowatts, which would earn the ocean all five of these points. However, this statistic has not been confirmed. So for now, we'll give the ocean the five points, but we'll leave an asterisk beside it. More on that later. Max charge speed doesn't tell the whole story. So the next portion of our 10 total charging points is two possible for 10 to 80% charge time. The Ionic 5 does 10 to 80% in 18 minutes, which is the big strength of the 800 volt Hyundai and Kia battery architecture, allowing the vehicle to accept higher charge speeds deeper into its charge curve. Under 30 minutes to 80% gets the Ionic 5 both of the possible two points. 30 to 39 minutes would earn one point and anything 40 minutes or over 10 to 80% earns zero out of a possible two. Time for another asterisk. If we assume the ocean charges at 250 plus kilowatts, then it would obviously be able to achieve both points in this category. Once again, this hasn't been confirmed. The final two charging points are for the first 100 miles. If those 100 miles can be gotten in less than 10 minutes, both points are awarded. 10 to 15 minutes for the first 100 miles earns one point and all others would miss out on these two points. 100 miles is like 39 or 40 percent charge on an Ionic 5 and on a 0 to 100 percent charging test the Ionic took 14 minutes. Also a 10 to 50 percent charge which is still 100 miles takes 11 minutes. So one out of two for the 100 miles points. There's no way to accurately measure this category for the ocean so we'll give it one out of the two points. Once again no verification for this score. That makes your total charging score for the Ocean Ultra 8 out of 10. The Ionic 5 gets a 7 out of 10 total. And with the Ionic 5 being one of the quickest charging vehicles out there, it shows how hard it is to earn both of these 100 mile points. Next up is power. Here's the breakdown. 700 plus horsepower is 10, 500 and above is 9, 400, 8, 300 or more is 7, 200 horsepower or more is 6 points, and all others are 5 points. The Ionic 5 rear wheel drive gets 6 out of 10, and it's 7 out of 10 for the all wheel drive. And 540 horsepower for the 
Ocean Ultra lands it a 9 out of 10. On to utility, which is also worth 10 points, but a bit specialized. If the EV has a hatchback gate, we add one point. Next, we take the cubic footage of the vehicle with the rear seats folded down and move the decimal to the left. 59 for the Ionic 5, leaving us with 6 after we round. Then, we subtract 1 for each vehicle, giving us 5, and add one additional point if the vehicle can sit 7 or more. Next, we look at towing capacity. Anything over 5,000 pounds adds one point, and for every additional 5,000 pounds, it's another point. The Ionic 5 gets a 6 out of 10 for utility. The measurement of cubic feet in the rear of the Ocean Ultra has been published at 45 cubic feet. We'll run with that number. It does have a hatchback. It does not reach 5,000 pounds towing capacity capacity, leaving us with 5 out of 10 for utility. The last 10 points out of 50 are broke down into our remaining categories. There's no wait time, that's one point. I found some Ionic 5s for sale, so it gets that point. If there's direct dealership service, that's two points, zero points if not. Ionic 5 earns both of those. Does the car offer over-the-air updates for software? Two points is yes, zero points if no. This information about the Ionic 6 kind of tells the whole story. Two points are added if there's a US US federal tax credit. The Ionic 5 and EV6 are not built in North America, so they don't qualify for the tax credit. Zero out of two for the Ionic 5. And finally, it's bi-directional charging. One point if the car is capable but not enabled. Two points for vehicle to load. Three points for vehicle to home. And four points if vehicle to grid is an available feature. Hyundai gets two points for vehicle to load. With a definite wait time, third-party service, and no U.S. tax credit, the Ocean is saved by offering over-the-air updates and being capable of vehicle-to-home, giving it 5 out of 10 for the miscellaneous category. The Kia EV6 is very similar to the Ionic 5 as they share the same platform and many components. There are differences between the all-wheel and rear-wheel drive variants, and it shakes out the same as the Ionic 5, giving the Ionic 5 and EV6 both 31 out of 50 for the nerd score. The Ocean Ultra is a little more complicated. Remember, we had some figures that have not been confirmed regarding charging and utility. So it's time to talk about the final rule regarding the comparison score. If any data is not confirmed or available, but the score still is able to be calculated, we subtract one point from the total score. Add it all up and the Ocean Ultra ends up with a 33 out of 50. Now it's time to move on to the FOMO score. Some of these categories are objective, but whether or not they matter to you is the subjective part. For design, this 10 points is a little more broad than just exterior design, but exterior design will definitely play a considerable role. Let me introduce you to Stash It or Slash It. Yes, that's the name because I couldn't think of a better one. A series of yes, no, maybe questions that produce a score out of 10. Yes being two points, maybe being one point, and no being none. After I use this scale to give each vehicle a score out of 10, I'll ask Connie a question that can give it some bonus points. Is that fair? Yes. Let's go. Stash it or slash it, Ionic 5. Is it better looking than my current car? Yes. That's two points. Will it be cool in five years? Yes. Two more points. Do I want one? Yes. And I can say that with total confidence. Subscribe to the channel to find out why. That video is coming soon. Would you trade for it? Yes. I would trade my Model Y for a new Ionic 5. Absolutely. Would my wife like it? Yes. I think that it is a compelling offering and that my wife would like to drive the car. And then a bonus, does my wife like it when I asked her if she liked it? She said yes. With all of the answers to those questions being yes, the Ionic 5 earns the maximum score for the design category, which is 10 out of 10. On to the ocean. Is it better looking than my current car? Yes. Will it be cooler in five years? I think because of the low volume, it will always be cool. So yes. Do I want one? Yes. I've committed to buy one. Would you trade for it? Yes. I would trade my current car for it. Would my wife like it? Yes. And does she like it? Yes. The ocean also earns all 10 of these design points. Just so we better understand this 10 points, we'll do the exact same thing with the ID4. Is it better looking than my current car? I'd say maybe. Will it be cool in five years? I say no. Do I want one? No. I do not. Would I trade for it? Absolutely not. I would never trade my car for a Volkswagen ID4. Would my wife like it? I'd go with a maybe here because it is an attractive car on the exterior. And when I asked her if she did like it, she did say yes. So two maybes and one yes for bonus points gives the ID4 four out of 10 in this design category. Next up is the marketing score, and this is kind of where we penalize companies for quoting a price for a vehicle that consumers will never see. 
we're going to take the top spec price and subtract the base model MSRP. If that number is under $10,000, it's eight points, seven for 10 to 20, six for 20 to 30. And if the gap is more than $30,000, five points. The Ionic 5 is just over $10,000 between the base model and the limited, but you can go a little higher than that. Either way, it's under 20,000. So the Ionic 5 gets seven points. We all know the Fisker Ocean starts at 37,499 US and goes all the way up to 68 8,999 US, which is 31,500 US, giving the Ocean a score of 5 out of 10 for marketing. After marketing comes the top spec 0 to 60, under 3 seconds 0 to 60 would be 10 out of 10, under 4 seconds is 9, under 5 is 8, under 6 is 7 points, anything 0 to 60 under 7 seconds gets 6 points, and all others are 5 points. The Ionic 5 reaches 60 in just over 5 seconds, giving it a 7 out of 10, whereas the Ocean does 0 to 60 in under 4 seconds, earning it a 9 out of 10 in this category. After that we look at price, which is just a way to separate separate a more affordably priced EV from something that is more top tier and prevents availability to a larger number of people. Under 30,000 is 8 points, 30,000 plus is 7, 40,000 and up is 6, 50,000 up is 5, 60,000 and up gets a 4, 70,000 and up with a 3, 80,000 and up with a 2, 90,000 plus is a 1, and anything over 100k would not score in this category. The Ionic 5 gets a 6 in this category with a starting price just over $40,000. We did the Fisker Ocean Ultra for the nerd score, but since a lot of these categories in the FOMO score are based on the entire car, the overall score for the Ocean would be the 7, thanks to the base MSRP of the Ocean Sport. Finally, we have the composite travel score, which is the 300-300 rule. For any EV to be road trip capable, in a similar way to a gas car, it would need to have 300 miles of range and 300 kilowatts fast charging. We take what percentage of this is true and move the decimal point to the left. With a maximum charging speed around 230 kilowatts and a range around 260 miles, the Ionic 5 scores 85% for the composite travel score. Rounding up, that's a 9 out of 10, bringing the total FOMO score to 39 for the Hyundai. The Fisker Ocean does very well in this category also, but we have not verified its maximum charge speed, therefore it gets another asterisk, meaning unfortunately we have to dock one point from the overall FOMO score. The composite travel score for the Ocean is a 9 out of 10. After we deduct the point for incomplete stats, the Ocean ties the Ionic 5 at 39 out of 50 for the FOMO score. Final result, the Ionic 5 earns an EV comparison score of 70 out of 100, and the Ocean Ultra gets a 72 out of 100. The Ocean 1 and Extreme would receive 73 out of 100 because they get one extra point on the nerd score for having 350 miles of range and not 340. So, which one do you get? Well, that's not for me to decide. The whole point of this score is to help you shop for an EV, and after you know the information, make an educated decision based on what you've learned. And after you've watched this video, make sure you check out my EV awards, which I gave to almost every EV available, with a little bit of sarcasm. It's right here. I did snub one vehicle, because what's an award show without a good snub? However, I did give it a score, and its score is part of the rankings. And if you're interested on the individual breakdown of each vehicle, the spreadsheets and all the data are available on my Patreon. So that's the EV comparison score. What questions do you have? Let me know down in the comments below. I cover a lot of stuff with EVs and especially the upcoming Fisker Ocean. Make sure you subscribe if you want to check out more. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Smash the like button. Thank you.